Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go get energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is building a high performance culture. Before we get into this, I remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation and Monday motivation message is guaranteed to have you focused, sharp, and on point to start your day or your week. Respectively, all you got to do to get this message is be a member of my texting community. It is free to join. Just text me at my number 305-384-6894. And once we start sending those messages out again, you'll be getting them straight to your phone. Secondly, work on your game university. That's the place where I do all of my high level coaching. If you are a top 2% performer, you're a type of person who wants to be in the top 2% of what you are doing, or you're already, you know, you're already in the top 2%. You want to stay there. and You know that you didn't get there doing everything on your own. You got there by actually focusing on what you do best so you didn't have to do everything on your own, actually the opposite of what most people think they need to do to get to the highest level. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That's where you can find out more about what we are doing, how we're doing it, who we're helping, and where it will fit into what you have going on to help you take your game where it needs to go or to have you fit into what we got going on. So we have programs, we have processes, we have systems, we have frameworks. For anything you heard me talk about here on the show when it comes to top-level performance, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com at link down below in the description. That out the way, let's get into the topic here today, which again is building a high performance culture. Now, everyone has heard the phrase high performance. A lot of people use it these days. As a matter of fact, I would even go as far as to say overuse it. And you hear a lot of people talking about it you know, from different angles. You hear speakers talk about high performance. Of course, athletes talk about high performance. Uh, entrepreneurs talk about high performance. Everybody's talking about high performance. But a lot of people are not really high performance. Now, the reason I'm talking about high performance, and I can talk about it with credibility is because I come from the professional sports world where you have no choice but to be a high performer to even get in the game, let alone stay in the game, let alone succeed in the game. And in what I do now, I mean, if you follow my work, you can see, uh, am I high performing? <laughs> am I high performing? Am I consistent? Am I showing up consistently? Am I giving you the game? Are right, you see me doing it? All right. So I'm not just talking about it. You see me doing it, even if I never brought it up and used the term. So I'm going to assume that you who listens to this, you are either are or you're aiming to be a high performing individual. So today I'm going to explain how to build a culture of high performance and a culture of high performance, meaning that the high performance is not limited to just you as an individual, but there's a whole culture of high performance happening. And I'm going to give you a definition of the word culture here. So everybody is on the uh, same page. Definition of culture is the arts, beliefs, customs, institutions, and other products of human work and thought considered as a unit, especially with regard to a particular time or social group. I get another definition is more uh, concise and uh, better fitting what we're talking about here today is a set of predominating attitudes and behavior that characterize a group or an organization. In other words, what are the norms of behavior? That's what a culture is, the norms of behavior. So if you want the norms of behavior to be high performance, then that's what we're talking about here today. And by the way, episode number 2345 and 2346, I talked about establishing your culture when it comes to your business and when it comes to your personal life. So if you haven't heard those episodes, I just gave you where you can go get those, go to work on your game podcast.com. While supplies last, you can access those. Uh, they may not always be there. So I would suggest when you hear me mention an episode that you want to go check, you go check it before I don't have them available in that way. They will be available, but just maybe not in the way they are. As of the moment that I'm recording this, it is available, but that could change. So I would suggest you get on that. Let's get into it. Point number one. Actually, one more thing before we get into point number one. Whether you are talking about doing this just as yourself, one person, high performance culture with yourself. So you have a culture as an individual person, by the way. Your aura, your energy, your reputation, that's all part of your culture. Or you want to do this as part of or as a leader of an organization or a team. Okay. Now, point number one. Topic, once again, is building a high performance culture. Number one, standards. Notice this word comes up a lot here. Standards. This is a, a phrase that gets talked about a lot in the work on your game world because standards are the floor. They are the baseline of what is acceptable versus what is not acceptable. Episode 2668, what standards are you willing to set? 
Episode number 2504, being hurt versus being injured, a discussion of principles and standards. Episode number 2097, standards still matter. Episode 1974, standards, the enemy of mediocrity. Episode 1331, never lower the bar of standards. Episode 1291, how to raise the standards of a group. Told you we talk about standards a lot. Standards are the starting point and the end point for any high level performance at any organization or person. If you want to be a high level individual or you want a high level organization, standards is where it begins. It's also where it ends. All standards are, it's a word that gets thrown around, but people don't, I don't often hear people explaining what it means. Standards just means rules, baselines, and non-negotiables that must exist in any organization which high level performance is the expectation. So if you had to simplify what standards means, it means rules, baselines, and non-negotiables. That's what a standard is. The rules, the baselines, and the non-negotiables. What are they for you? Definition of a standard <clears throat> is acceptable, but of, no, that's not it. Standard means serving as or conforming to an established or accepted measurement or value. Key phrase there, established or accepted measurement or value. That's what standard means. And I'm actually reading the adjective definition. We should use the noun definition, which is an acknowledged measure of comparison for quantitative or qualitative value, also known as a criterion. That's the standard. You want a high level. If you want a high performance, rather, culture, you must set standards that as long as they are met, your culture is high performance. That's it. Simple as that. If high performance means you have a single digit body fat, that means your standard is Nothing less than, nothing more than, rather, 9% body fat. Nine, anything more than 9% would be 10%, and that would make you having double-digit body fat. So the standard is, this is the baseline, nothing less than this is acceptable. That's it. Simple as that. Yes, it's simple. As there was a guy named Phil Sky. He was from Altoona, PA, or at least he lived in Altoona, PA. He was a well-known businessman in the town. And I interned under Mr. Sky when I was a senior in college at Penn State Altoona in 2004. And when I was interning with him, I would ride around with him in his car many times when he was taking these trips and doing things with him. And one of the things that I remember him saying, and he emphasized it, was that people don't do what you expect, they do what you inspect. That's a, a way of explaining standards, because a standard is not an expectation. A standard is a rule. And the difference between an expectation and a rule is an expectation is I may expect you to do something, but I'm not going to check on if you did it or not. A rule is... You have to do this this way, and I'm going to check. And if you don't do it, then there's a penalty. That's the difference between an expectation and a rule. So when you inspect what people are doing, that's because there are rules in place, there are standards in place, and everyone's held accountable to the standards. Standards require accountability, whereas an expectation does not. Expectation is a desire. A standard is a rule, is a demand. People do not do what you expect. They do what you inspect. So what you inspect is a form of enforcing your standard. It's not just letting people know what you want them to do. It's telling them, hey, this is what has to happen, and I'm going to check on it. And when they know you're going to check on it, people usually do more and better work than when they're not being checked on. Has any of you had that experience? Maybe some of you, even when you're the one being checked on, you know you do better work when you're going to be checked on than when you know that you're not. So that, that's accountability. Being checked on and held accountable for what you're supposed to do or held to standards that you have to meet, that's also known as accountability. So a standard is basically an expectation with measurement. That's what it is. You take an expectation, you add measurement and accountability, you now have a standard. Everybody got that? That's the equation that uh, you can put in place. So it's expectation plus measurement plus accountability equals standard, period. That's how it works. So if any of you want to set standards for yourself, take your expectations and add those two elements and you're there. And again, every standard must be Check the one and it must be met. Uh, there is no there is no accepting a un, an unmet standard. And if you want a high performance culture, your standards need to be set such that high performance exists when the standard is met. Therefore, there's no way you can have anything less than high performance because everything that meets the standard equals high performance. So you decide what high performance is for you. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to create a high performance culture. Number two, raise your floor. Just talked about this a couple of days ago, how to raise the floor and why to raise the floor. You want to raise your level of performance, you must raise the baselines of what is expected and what will be accepted. In other words, raising the standard. High performers continually raise their floor by continually raising the minimum accepted level of output, production, or results that are allowed by them or by the organization. 
high performing cultures, let's say an organization is a high performing organization, they set a bar and they're hitting the bar and they're doing their thing and then they raise the bar higher and say, okay, we're going to do this even better. We're going to do even more than what we did before. You notice this, any of you who follows big businesses or you follow the stock market companies, usually are expected to continue to grow and get better. It is not acceptable for them to be in the same spot. And if they end up in the same spot and they have too many years of flat movement, meaning let's say the company did uh, $200 million in Q4 of last year, and then in quarter one of this year, they did another $200 million. Then in quarter two, they did another $200 million. But they might end up firing the CEO by the end of quarter two because they're like, this company's not growing. We're not advancing. We're still in the same spot. Now, you may think, some of you may look at that and say, well, 200 million is 200 million. You're steadily making 200 million dollars. Shouldn't you be happy? Not high performers. High performers are not happy. When I was a senior in high school, our basketball coach gave us this little pamphlet that on the first page of the pamphlet, well, most of the pamphlet was just plays, like diagramming the plays that we would run during the season and defenses and stuff like that. But the first page of the pamphlet was just a couple of motivational messages. And one of the things that it said on the pamphlet was that the best players are never satisfied with their past performances. That's what I'm explaining to you here. High performers are never satisfied with what they've achieved already. They're always looking to achieve more, go further, push themselves harder and raise the bar. High performers are always looking to raise the bar. Yes, what I did last year was amazing, but this year I need to be better than that. Why? Because I'm a year older, a year smarter, a year more experienced. Why should I do the same thing I did last year? That means this year meant nothing. The whole year between then and last year is exactly the same. That means I didn't get better. All right? Doesn't that just make sense? High performers are not okay with flat growth. They're definitely not okay with going backwards. They always are looking to do more and better than what they did in the past. So they're looking to continually raise their floor, the minimum accepted level of output production or results that they will allow. When you make your first dollar in business, you may be happy to have made a sale. A few years later, Maybe you're only happy if you make 20 sales a day. Years after that, you might go crazy if you aren't making at least $10,000 a week. These are all forms of raising the floor. So you were happy back when you made your first dollar, but making just $1 is not acceptable today because you got much bigger expectations. Right? Your expectations have been raised because you raised the floor because you have changed your standards. And again, the expectations had to be met based on the standards that you have set. And this requires something that we're going to get into in our third point. But I want to talk a little bit more about this one right here when it comes to raising the floor. You got to decide what you believe you're capable of. And then you also got to get the tools in place to actually get this done. And we're going to talk about, about that a little bit more in part number three. But when it comes to this second point, raising the floor, again, listen to the episode a couple of days ago where we talked about raising the floor. What is acceptable and what's not acceptable? What are you okay with and what are you not okay with? And oftentimes, uh, this is the reason why, uh, backing up here, this is the reason why I always come back to mindset with everything that we talk about here at Work On Your Game, because oftentimes when people are not performing at the level that they want to perform at, i.e. your expectations, we tend to think about, and every human makes this mistake sometimes, some just make it more than others, and some are slower to fix it than others, but we all make the mistake of thinking, well, oh damn, well, I don't have the resources, I don't have the tools, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have the information, I don't have the connections, I don't know what to do. And we use that lack of resources as a reason that it's okay that the expectations are not being met. But understand that when you set an expectation and you add measurement and accountability, which now makes it into a standard, that means uh, there are no exceptions. There are no exceptions when you have a standard. And see, what that means is it holds your feet to the fire, it puts pressure on you by you to perform to a certain level, even though you don't have the resources to do it the easy way or the way that you thought you would need to do it. You still had to do it because it's a standard. See, when it's a standard, there are no exceptions. When it's a standard, there is no, was okay that we didn't do it today. That's not acceptable when you have standards. Now, when you don't have standards, that's acceptable. But when you do have standards, it's not acceptable. So the question is, which one are you? Do you have them or do you not? So again, making your first dollar was big when you hadn't made any money. Then 10 sales a day was great. Now, 10,000 a day is great. And again, this is the key point. As my high school basketball coach said, the best players are never satisfied with their past performances. Best players are not okay resting on their laurels of what they've done already. They're not okay with, well, everybody here knows that I'm a star. So if I have a mediocre game today, that's okay. They still see me as a star. That's not acceptable. Best players are always raising their standards and demanding of themselves to live up to those standards, even when it's uncomfortable to live up to the standards. Uh, this is why it's difficult for people to do this. 
it's easy to talk about it, but it's difficult to do because you have to live up to those standards, and that's not easy. If you're continually raising the standards, that means you got to keep getting better. You have to keep performing at a higher level than what you did in the past, even though what you did in the past might have been pretty damn good. How many people do you know who do that? Point number three, today's topic, once again, is how to build a high-performance culture. Number three, in order to make all this happen, you need systems of accountability. Keyword, systems. Systems of accountability. Here's another thing you need to understand about the highest level performers. They do not do everything by themselves. They do the stuff that they're great at, and then they have other entities, whether those are people, systems, processes, software, whatever, doing other things in place of them doing it themselves. That frees them up to do what they do best, which is how they look like geniuses, because they're only doing what they do best. And then everything else is getting done because they just have other things and people in place to take care of everything else. So that's part of the system. Another part of the system for high level performers is that they have people around them who hold them accountable. That's why it's called systems of accountability, hold them accountable to keep performing at that high level. So, okay, I did great last year. How do we do better this year? Okay, I need more information. I need more insight. I need better processes. I need better people. I got to raise the level of the team. Maybe some of these people got to go and we got to replace them with some better people so that we can perform at this higher level that I have set as an expectation along with accountability and measurement for myself, which makes it a standard. For me to reach this standard, I can't have the same team next year that I had last year because some of these people on this team are not good enough to reach that standard. They're good enough to reach last year's standard. They're not good enough to reach this year's standard. So some of these people got to go and we got to replace them with better people. This is how a successful organization can still be making changes along the way because the success that they had in the past is not good enough for the success they need in the future. This is why changes can still occur. You're like, this team, was, this team was good. This business was doing good last year. Why are they making changes? Because they want to do better next year. And to do better, they got to be better. And to be better, somebody got to go and some people have to come in. That's how it works. So if you're going to raise the floor and demand high performance in your organization, you need systems in place that facilitate that level of performance. That means the people, that means the processes, that means the thinking, all of it. And all of it needs to be held accountable to do what they're supposed to do. The people had to be held accountable. The processes got to be held accountable. The systems had to be held accountable. The software got to be held accountable. The maintenance man has to be held accountable. Everyone needs to be held accountable to perform. I hope you notice that the same phrases keep coming up over and over again in this conversation. No, that's not by accident because they're important. You want to have a culture of high performance. These things that I keep saying are going to keep coming up. Standards, expectations, measurements, accountability. They're going to come up over and over and over and over again anywhere that you see high performance happening. Even if people don't use these exact words, that's what's happening. Again, pay it. If you just watch, you'll notice it. Any high performance environment, any culture that is of high performance, you're going to notice these things. You're going to see standards. These are the baseline acceptable things. You're going to see measurement. This is how we know what we're doing. You're going to see accountability. If someone's not or someone or something's not doing their job, they're going to know and everybody's going to know that they're being measured for their job. And you're going to see it happening on a consistent basis, always. Is the expectation amongst the group and everyone is holding each other accountable. So you got to set the culture that makes high performance possible. Does everybody have the tools necessary to perform at a high level? Does everyone have the understanding to perform at a high level? Does everyone know what the process is to perform at a high level? And does everyone have the ability to live up to the bar that you are setting? Are, are you setting people up to succeed? Do you have people on your team who are good enough to hit these numbers that you're setting? If you're a sales manager, as a matter of fact, I was talking to a, a sales team a couple of days ago and I connected with the sales team via the person who's their sales manager. And is, if you're a sales manager, for example, and you want to set really high sales quotas for your sales team, the first thing you got to ask yourself is, all right, do the people on my sales team, number one, do they have the ability to sell the product? Period. Can they sell the product? Period. Secondly, are these people capable of performing at the level of reaching these quotas, these expectations that I'm setting? Are they even capable of it? Because maybe you need better salespeople. Maybe you need a better sales process. Maybe you just got to do better training of those people. But if you're going to have a team and give them an expectation, you got to give them the tools to actually meet the expectation. So it's not just all on them. Some of it needs to be on whoever is setting the standard. Am I putting these people in a position to win? If, I'm tell if I have a, a team, let's say I had an office and I had some people working in my office for me and I tell them that I want them working the computers all day, but they don't have computers or I got three people sharing one computer. Well, I'm not setting them up to win. I'm setting them up to fail. I'm, I want all three of them doing a full time job on a computer with one computer. That's not going to work. So I got to buy two more laptops to make sure everybody has the tools to do the job that I'm asking them to do. 
and I got to make sure I'm giving them the process so that they can actually do the job. So it's not only can they do it, will they do it? And am I setting them up to do it? And that's the leader's, that's the leader's responsibility. So if you set a bar for yourself, for example, to wake up an hour earlier every day so you can go to the gym and work out, question, are you setting yourself up systematically to get that extra hour wake up happening? In other words, are you setting yourself up to be successful? Are you going to bed early enough so that you can wake up at 5 a.m. as opposed to going to bed at such a time that you're normally staggering out of bed at 6 a.m.? How are you going to wake up an hour earlier when you're barely getting up at the later time? Are you setting yourself up to win? Are you going to forego sleep? And if so, what's your motivation to do so? So let's say you keep going to bed at midnight, but you don't get up at 5 a.m. Okay, so you're going to go off five hours of sleep. All right. What's your motivation to go off for five hours when you're barely getting by on six hours? How are you going to do that? Or are, you going to be, or are you going to go to bed hour earlier? And if so, what are you giving up in that last hour of the night that you won't be able to do now because you're going to sleep? Are you okay making that trade off? So you got to be asking and answering these questions. So if your systems are not properly in place, your high performance is not going to happen. So high performance is not just about motivation and talent and tools. It's also about asking the right questions and asking yourself, are you setting yourself up to succeed or to fail? Let's recap today's class, which is building a high performance culture. Everyone's heard the phrase, and I'm going to tell you how to set this culture again with one person or with a bunch of people. Number one, standards. Starting at any point for any high-level performance or any organization of a per or a person is that you set rules, baselines, and non-negotiables that must exist in any organization in which high-level performance is the expectation. When you take an expectation, you add measurement, you add accountability, you now have a standard. Point number two, raise the floor. If you want to raise your level of performance, you must raise the baseline of what is expected and what will be accepted. In other words, you are raising the standards. That's what the floor is. What was your standard last year? And if you want to do better, then your standard this year has to be higher than whatever you did last year. That way, there is no way you can come up short of the standard. That means you, but just by doing a baseline level, you are better than you were in the past. Are you willing to set a standard like that? Uh, that is a high demand you're putting on yourself. It sounds good when we're talking about it. It's much harder in practice. Number three, systems of accountability. If you want to perform at a high level, you got to set yourself up to perform at a high level. You need the tools, you need the resources, you need the insights, you need the people, you need the training, you need the processes. You need all of those things to support the goal. The goal itself is not enough. You need all the pieces around the goal to support it. If you don't have that, then you're setting yourself up to fail. With that said, make sure you text so you're in my texting community. And speaking of what I just talked about, all right, one of the resources that you need to perform at a super high level is you need extra sets of eyes around you. You need the right processes. You need the right strategies. You need the right mindset. And you need the right implementation tools to make it happen, not just the goal and not just a bunch of rah-rah motivation. That's why we have Work On Your Game University. You can become a member and work with me directly by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.